the Lord directed me to look at the acronomy that the World Health Organization had for the coronavirus. I looked at it again. And immediately I looked at it. The Holy Spirit revealed something to me. Which is what I'm talking about this morning. If we look at that acrimony very well, it says C-O-V-I-D, COVID-19. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me something. C-O-V, what does C-O-V stand for? It stands for Covenant. ID, we know what an ID is. Your identity. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is speaking in these times and season that we are living in as the angel of destruction is going about throughout all the world. Hallelujah. What he's looking for is our covenant identity. Hallelujah. Do you have your identity card on you? Or you have the identity card of the devil? Do you have the card that identifies you as a child of God, the one who has been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you a covenant keeper? Because covenant keepers always carry their ID with them everywhere we go. You drive in a vehicle, you carry your ID with you. Hallelujah. Wherever you go as a covenant keeper, the one who has been redeemed, who has been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you are supposed to be carrying your identity with you. You are a child of God, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever the world is going through has no power over you. Because the devil sees you for who you are. He sees your ID. He identifies you. Hallelujah. The angels of destruction is going all over the world doing what? Identifying those who keep the covenant. There are three kinds of people in the world today. We have those who keep the covenant. We have those who mix up or pollute the, their covenant. And we have those who deliberately break the covenant. They break it, hallelujah, arbitrarily without even thinking, having a second thought about it. Sin has increased tremendously in this world today. Men as who are... Uh, confess Christ as their Lord and Savior, have turned their back away from the one with whom they are the covenant with from the very, very beginning. They've lost their identity card. They've lost everything that identifies them as a child of God. They have reputation with the world. The world knows them for who they are, but in the kingdom of God, they have become like nothing. Yet, they say, I'm a Christian, but the word of God is not alive in them. So the idea that we can speak the blood of Jesus, we can speak the blood of Jesus, but if you don't have in that identity with you, what identifies you as a child of God, your confession or your pleading of the blood of Jesus has no value in the presence of God. You can plead the blood thousand times, ten thousand times. Do you know who you are? Do you know what identifies you? Are you carrying your identity with you when you are in the world with the people you socialize with? Thank God. God has to move 
with his power and might, he shook nations. He shook, he has shaken kingdoms uh, to make sure that your socializing are to be limited. He has brought you down to the place where you are. Maybe you are in the quarantine, self-quarantine of both. First quarantine, God is the one who has brought you to that position to humble you, to bring you back to himself. Because many people today have lost their identity. God wants you to recognize who you are. Come back to your senses. Come back to recognize who am I. Do all those things I've been doing, living my life before all this time. Oh my God, I can't do it anymore. Yes, (laughs) yes, it's only God who can do that. Nothing is too difficult for him. If he has to move mountains, if he has to move valleys, he will do whatsoever he wants to do to get your attention. And right now, you may be in your your living room or in your bedroom listening right now. God is talking to you. Do you have your identity with you? Do you have what identifies you as a child of God in your life right now? Or are you still thinking, pondering about the social life you are missing right now? God is calling you. The Bible says, I'm reading right now, in Hebrews chapter 12, from verse, from verse 22. It says there, was talking about Moses. He said, but you have come. He's talking about us today. He said, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come. To thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. To the church of the firstborn. Who is the firstborn? Jesus. The church of Jesus Christ. The body of Christ. That is who you are. If you are not part of those people he's talking about there in that holy assembly, you don't see yourself as part of that holy assembly of the children of God. You don't see yourself in eternity with the children of God, with the angels together singing and rejoicing in the presence of God. Then you are lost. You don't have your identity, your covenant identity. And without that covenant that identifies you, you cannot get into the kingdom of God. That's why he continued to say here, you have come. Who is he talking to? Those who have the identity with them. Those who recognize that they are the children of God. Those who know that their sins have been forgiven. Their, their past have been washed away. Hallelujah. They are not saying they are righteous, but they are seeing themselves right now in the, as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because whatsoever is not perfect in their life has been made perfect by the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ. And because now they know who they are in Christ Jesus, they have the power, they have the authority to walk boldly in the midst of all the things that is going on right now. They have no fear in them, but they can proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is the healer, that Jesus Christ is the Savior. The Bible says there, I continue to read the scripture right now. It says here, you have come. Whose name are written in the heavens? You have come to God. The judge of all men. is judging all men now. To the spirit of righteous men. Made perfect. Hallelujah. It's wanting to be righteous, but it's wanting to be perfect. Hallelujah. To Jesus, Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about this morning. The new covenant. Jesus is the mediator between man and God. 
Hallelujah. Without your sins being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you cannot enter into that covenant with God the Father. Jesus is the man who stands between us and God. He is the God-man. The God who became a man to show us that we can act like God, speak like God, create things like God, heal like God, deliver like God. And whatsoever we speak out of our mouth, the angels, the numerous angels, the hosts of heaven, they back our words up. Those are the ones that Jesus came to reconcile back unto the Father. They don't talk like the world. They don't live like the world. They don't act like the world. And then go to church on Sunday confessing their sin because right now many people are sitting down at home. They're not able to, to do what they normally do every Sunday. Why do you go to church every Sunday? Do you go to church to see your friends? To socialize? Or you go to church because you want to fellowship with your father? Thank God. Our God is powerful. He's mighty. He removed everything that man has made of church services on Sunday. Or the weekly fellowship. Men have set it up by themselves. They have their own agenda, what they're doing. But now, it brought you down to the place where you have to search for him. This is the moment we know whether you are truly a Christian or a Christian by name or a Christian by association. Whether you actually identify as a child of God. COVID-19 covenant identity where is your covenant identity all these years you celebrate Christmas all these years you are going to celebrate Easter very soon do you know who you are what is the purpose for which you are in the kingdom of God You just go to church on Sundays. You go to church during the week. But you are not serving the Lord. You are not fulfilling any of his calling. You only go to social and mix up with the crowd. And then the rest of the time you spend with the world. Now God is calling you back to himself. Jesus, the mediator of that new covenant... He's talking to you right now. Bringing you back to yourself. He's asking you, where is your identity? What identifies you as a child of the kingdom of God? You call a a Christian. Why are you a Christian? What makes you a child of God? Verse 24, we've come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Hallelujah. And the sprinkled blood <laughs> that speak a better word than the blood of Abel. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Why the blood of Hebel is always was always crying for revenge, vengeance. The blood of Jesus pleads for mercy, mercy, mercy. Hallelujah. When you call upon that blood, you receive mercy. Hallelujah. Mercy for the forgiveness of your sin. Mercy for the forgiveness of your lukewarmness toward the things of God. You have neither been called nor ought, but God is ready to forgive you. He says, I stand on
on the door and knock. If anyone will open the door for me, I will come in and sup with him. The blood of Jesus. That sprinkled blood is calling for mercy. Hallelujah. It's not calling for vengeance. It's not calling to destroy you. It's just calling you. It's giving you the grace for the 15 or 14 days. The time you're sitting down. Quarantine or self-quarantine or, or just sitting down to think about yourself. Think, ponder about your life. Ponder about your walk with the Son of God. Do you really identify with him? What is your identity? COVID-19. Covenant. It's all about the covenant. Many have broken their covenant. Hallelujah. They break enter into marriage, marital relationship, and which is before the next few weeks, you hear them breaking up. There are some sitting down at home right now because they've been forced to be at home with their husband, with their spouses or wives for so long a time. They've been quarreling, hallelujah. You're thinking about who, man, I'm going to break out of this marriage after this whole thing is already. Repent. You're thinking about breaking your covenant with the man or the woman you've been married with because of an argument? What a shame. Covenant breakers. And this is what all these things is all about. People who are not being faithful to the covenant that they enter with by the blood of Jesus with the Heavenly Father. It's time to repent. God is calling you on to repentance today. God, Jesus, is calling you back home, sinner. He's saying it's time to Declare to the demons and the powers of darkness of this world who you really are. Because after this whole thing is over, after the 14 days, I guarantee you there have been many who will be coming out of their houses. It will be as if they're coming out from a cocoon. Hallelujah. Swarming onto the streets because after their experience from meditation on the word of God, from fellowshipping with the Father, they've come to realize something. Their identity, their covenant with God can never be broken. They are not covenant breakers and they are going in the fire of the Holy Spirit Spirit because the spirit of the Lord has renewed them. It has refreshed them. They're going in the demonstration of the power of the kingdom to declare the kingdom of God to the end of the earth. This is your time of preparation. Are you using it wisely? Or are you just using it sitting down at home watching the television? Watching all the movies, listening to all the jargons on the on the news network. When is this thing going to be over? Hallelujah! It's going to be over only as soon as at first you get yourself into the Word of God and start reading your Bible every day. Read it. You can read it from morning to evening. Just keep on reading it. If you want to fast and pray, do some fasting and prayer. Because when this thing is over, the power of God is going to come power about you. You will know exactly what God or for what purpose you have been called into the kingdom of God. So the Bible says there in verse 29, <clears throat> I'm reading <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. And verse, sorry, 25. It says, see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. You might turn, your, <laughs> turn it off now, saying you don't want to listen to this anymore. If they did not escape when they refused him, who won them on the head? How much less we will if we turn away from him who wants us from heaven? Because they, what is going on right now is God is warning us from heaven. 
is telling us where is your ID? Where is your identity card? Hallelujah. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been cleansed? Have you been to the flow of the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah. Because only those who have been washed in the blood, who know they have been washed in the blood, who has experienced the reality of the new life in Christ Jesus, are going to come out stronger. They are going to come out bolder. They are going to come out renewed, refreshed from the presence of the Most High God. So don't waste your time watching the newspaper, reading the news jargon, And some of you men watching pornography, repent. It's time to repent. This is not a time for you to get on the internet looking for a new wife or a new girlfriend to date online. This is the time for you to repent and get your hair straightened up. Renew your mind with the word of God so that God will set you apart for the greater things he has for your life. Because your identity is in him. Your identity is in God. When he called you, he separated you for himself. He's got his hand all over you. You can't afford to be messing around. You've been messing around for too long. You've been fooling around like the world. You've been fooling around. Forgetting your identity. Just like the prodigal son forgot who he was. He wasted his life partying. He wasted his life at the clubhouses. He wasted his life drinking whiskey. Some of you sitting down at home now getting drunk with vodka. Some of you sitting down at home now taking all the bottles of beer and alcohol you could take because you can't go out anyway. Every morning you would drink, get drunk the evening. You have no sense of who you are in Christ Jesus. Instead of you getting drunk in the Holy Ghost, filling your heart with the word of God so that the presence of the Lord will renew you, refresh you, give you a clear vision How about tomorrow? All you sitting down at home thinking about is to get out of this situation and go out there back into the world doing the old garbage you've been doing before. Don't you have a sense? Can't you come back to your senses? Don't you remember who you are? Don't you remember God lives on the inside of you? Don't you remember the blood of the Son of Jesus that set you apart for himself? He's calling you back right now. He says here, hallelujah, in verse 26, at that time, his voice shook the house. Oh, God's voice is shaking the world right now. That's what he says here. But now he has promised, once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Hallelujah. The earth is being shaken. Governments are closing down. (laughs) All nations have been held at a standstill. Because God is shaking the earth. And guess what? It is only those who are unshakable, who are unmovable, who know who they are in the covenant that identifies them as children of God who will be saved, who will be rescued, who will be delivered from all of this. That's why it says there, once more, I will shake not only the head. (laughs) 
but also the heavens. Because as the shaking is going on, the whole heaven and earth is held at a standstill right now. The kingdom of darkness are also being shaken. Those who work for the devil cannot go out there and do their nonsense anymore. They can't get drunk anymore. The ladies who go out in the night doing prostitution, they can't go out there anymore. Soliciting for men. Hallelujah. You that like to party and get drunk and do all the nonsense, you, you can't do it anymore. The kingdom of darkness is shaking also. God's voice is shaking the whole earth. He said, once more, I'm going to shake them. Let me shake them and see who they really are. Hallelujah. Are, still, are they steadfast, keeping my covenant, or are they covenant breakers? Are they covenant keepers or covenant breakers? Or are they covenant mixers? Because you cannot go out of this situation that is going on around the world today. I want to be mixing the covenant with the system of this world as you used to do before. It's all over. Game over. That's what God is saying. Game over. You are either for him or for the devil. You can't stand in between the church and the world. Hallelujah. It's time to make a declaration. It's time for you to get into the presence of the Most High God. Hallelujah. But it will shake also the heavens. Verse 27. The word once more indicates the removing of what can be shaken. Did you see that? What can be shaken. That is created things. Who are the created things? What are the created things? Hallelujah. The wealth of this hand. This deceitfulness of this world. The lust of the flesh. Everything that you think you have your confidence in. People are losing their jobs. Yes, God is shaking. He's shaking things. He's shaking jobs. He's shaking people's positions. He's moving people forward. And he's moving some people are going backward because of their lukewarmness toward the things of God. Some people are coming out of this into some big, big promotions. Just because you lost your job doesn't mean it's the hand for you. Because if you choose your time wisely at this time, as this thing is going on, God will get you out of these whole things and put you in a better position than you were before you lost that job. So don't be afraid of the shaking. Just be steadfast. Be focused. Know who you are. Get your identity right with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, it indicates the removing of that which can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, hallelujah, the kingdom of God cannot be shaken. That is the kingdom we are receiving. Hallelujah. Let us be thankful and be so and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for God. Our God is a consuming fire. Ooh. The consuming fire is burning right now. The coronavirus is going on right now. You better get your identity straightened up, brother. Sister, it's time to come back home. It's time to come back to your senses. Hallelujah. The Bible said the prodigal son came back to himself. Can you come back to yourself? Can you t- 
turn your heart back. Think inwardly. So that after all this is gone, after the Passover, or after the death of those things that are about to die in your life, There is a glorious resurrection that is coming out of you. Hallelujah. You're going to celebrate Easter and you're going to be able to celebrate it. Who? I'm risen from the dead. It's not only Christ that rose from the dead. I've been dead these 14 days. But look at me. I've risen. Hallelujah. The power that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of me. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 11 that if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, these 14 days that you are self-quarantined, these 14 days that you've been forced to be at home, they said the same spirit will quicken your mortal body, your mortal flesh by a spirit, hallelujah, that dwells on the inside of you. Restoration power is coming out of you, manifesting itself through you in the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the consuming fire wants to manifest itself to the world around you. God wants to show up wherever you show up. God wants to speak wherever you speak. God wants to move and act wherever you go. Hallelujah. That's what all this is all about. It's not a time for you to, to wander and start fearing and get yourself into the, into the trap of the devil. It's a time of renewal. Is a time of self-realization of your identity, conscious realization of who you are. Let Christ's righteousness become your consciousness so that you start living in the power of his Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray right now for you, brother and my sister. I know maybe you've missed it one way or the other. You listening to me right now? You listening to what I've been saying for the past 30 minutes or so? God's power is available for you right in your living room, wherever you are right now. He wants to minister unto you. Maybe you've been so much involved on the internet doing pornography, or you're the one who, who have been who have lived a reckless life uh, with all kinds of women, all kinds of men. Uh, you have been lustful for the things of this world. Uh, they have possessed your heart. But now it's time to get delivered. It's time to get you free. And that begins from you, first of all, understanding that you cannot help yourself. You need Jesus to help you. You need a consuming fire to come into your life and consume all those dirty things that are in your heart, all those grease that are in your heart that's blocking the flow of the power of God in your life. Only Jesus, the blood, can do that work. The blood of the covenant. The same covenant that identifies you. That blood is able to cleanse you. If you will let him right now. But you must understand one thing. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by you obeying this, obeying that. Because when his blood cleanses you, his grace will begin to carry you you will begin to understand who you are. Because after I pray with you, I will ask you to start doing for the remaining time you're going to be staying at home to start doing certain things. Make sure you do that on a regular basis. And I want you to get on our contact form on the website and let me know what Jesus 
is doing in your life. But right now, since you have come to realize that you've moved too far away from God, I want you to repeat these words with me. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for his blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for my sake. Jesus, the Bible says, whosoever calls upon your name shall be saved. They shall be delivered. I call upon your name right now. Jesus, save me, deliver me, wash me with your blood, clear me up of my past. I repent before you right now of my dirty, shady past. I repent of all of my sins, every single one of them. Thank you for your blood that's walking in my soul, in my heart right now. I give my heart unto you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come and make your home in me. I choose to submit unto you. I choose from today on to be identified as a child of the living God. I repent from the ways of the world. I'm turning a new leaf to follow you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus. And you devil, I break every covenant that I had with you before. In the name of Jesus, I renounce every covenant that I had with you in the past. I am now a child of God. I belong to Jesus. His blood identifies me as a covenant child of God. And I belong to him. And I will live for him for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Some few things. As you've said that prayer. It's important for you to make that declaration as you've made it. But it's much more better for you to get into your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, it's not a time for you to be going into the stores. In some countries right now, as I'm speaking right now, because because we, we have pastors in different nations. There are some countries that have been reporting that they are running out of Bibles because of these quarantine things. Many people are going to the bookstore to pick up Bibles, to buy it with their own money. They're not asking people to donate Bibles for them. They're spending their own money to buy Bibles. It shows to you the urgency of the time we are in right now. People are desperate for answers. And you find it today. Get your Bible. You can download a Bible app on your cell phone. Mm-hmm. If you can't find one in the store. But you got to make a determination to start reading your Bible every day. From morning, if you, that's the only thing you have to do all day. <laughs> Read it. Let God speak to you. Mm-hmm. Don't waste your time on the internet away. You've just spoken right now words before God. You're not going back to that temptation to sin. You've turned a new leaf. Live before God righteously. And after this quarantine or whatsoever is going on in the world right now, it's over. Get into a church. If you want a church where you are right now, contact us on our website. Let us know where you live, what country you are living in, and what area you are. And we will be able to locate a very good church, whatever country you are listening to this from. 
There's a church in your neighborhood there where you can go to. Mm-hmm. Where you can just go to, but where you can serve God. Because often at time is because you've not been serving God, devoted to serving God in a local church, that you've become lukewarm to the things of God. You don't go to church anymore. You only go to socialize. But the moment you get your servant to the business of the church, the business of the kingdom of God, you will see how your spiritual growth will skyrocket. God will promote you. I love you with the love of God. And I'll be praying for you. Let us know what Jesus has begun in you. Read your Bible every day. Pray every day. Reconcile back to your spouse. If you both say this prayer together, join hands together and make a determination together to study the Bible, read the Bible together, to seek answers for what God wants both of you to do in the kingdom of God. Let us know what God is doing in your home, in the lives of your children, and in your country, in your community. God bless you. I'm from Bible Vision International Ministry. My name is Abraham Hadeye. Get to our website. We'll be very happy to hear from you. Have a beautiful, wonderful new life in Christ Jesus. Amen.